I'm ready. Ooh. Oh! My. Okay. Ooh. Like so. As long as it's like maintaining most this grow. I love this plant and pot combo. Hey guys, what's up? It's Fern. Thank you so much for joining me for another planty video. Today we are starting off another lovely episode of plant chores and I'm really excited because we are starting some cool projects today. I have some of my larger plants that we are going to work on propagating, which I've just been dying to do. So I'm super stoked on that. And then we're also going to be potting up some of my plants that have been propagating for a while. They're ready to be potted up. So on some plants, we're focusing on the beginning of the propagation journey. And then on others, we are finishing the propagation journey as we transfer them to a potting mix. Honestly, one of my favorite planty things to do. I love anything to do with propagation. It's always so fun and satisfying. So yes, I hope that that sounds good to you. Um, I hope that you're able to grab yourself a cozy beverage or a snack or better yet, your own plant chores and we can do them together. Before we hop into the plants, I'm gonna give a huge shout out to today's sponsor, which is Endel. Endel is an incredible app that uses cutting edge technology to create personalized soundscapes to help you focus, relax, or even sleep. I've been using Endel since August now and loving it. I use it mostly while I'm working to focus and also when I'm like winding down for the evening, just trying to relax. It's so nourishing to have an incredible soundscape going that really pairs with what you're doing. And that's exactly what Endel does. It's created and backed by science and they use AI technology to create a personalized soundscape for you in that moment. So they use inputs like um, you, the weather where you are, um, your movement, the time of day, even your heart rate, you can link up to it if you have, if you have your watch connected. I listen to Endel a lot while I'm working and I think it's great for anybody who just wants that extra boost of focus or if you just like working with background music on but you often get distracted, well Endel is a great solution because it's specifically crafted to help boost your focus or to help you unwind at the end of the day. That is another time that I love listening to it. Sometimes I feel like my brain gets a little like overwhelmed and burnt out from being constantly bombarded with, um, you know, watching videos, podcasts, Netflix, um, even just like regular music. Sometimes it's nice to just have like a really relaxing soundscape going on to kind of wind down for the night. If this sounds like something that would be of benefit to you, I highly recommend that you check it out. You can actually get a free week of audio experiences if you download Endel with the link down below in my description box. Thank you so much to Endel for sponsoring today's video. Now let's hop into the plant shorts. Okay, so yes, as you can see, I have brought out the beautiful Monstera Dubia, and look at this. She has grown right over the plank. Let's get a view of the back. I have not even looked yet myself. Oh, look at those roots right there. Okay, they actually look quite creepy. Anyways, yes, definitely time to propagate this plant. So, oh my goodness, October is an extremely busy month for me. So I was gonna make a whole dedicated video to like the journey of propagating this plant, but, and I was also gonna do that for a few other plants, but I just, I just don't have the time for that. So that's why we're doing it in today's plant chores video because she cannot wait, you know? She cannot wait for my busy schedule to accommodate her. She's already growing over the plank and I'm already off track with what my plan was going to be for this plant. I was going to, when once it got around this point, I was going to cover the roots with moss so that I could kind of do like an air layering thing. Whoa, it just looks so crazy. Um, and then it would just be completely ready by the time it got to the top. But uh, obviously <laughs> I didn't do that. So we're just gonna be cutting her today. So I have not done much to prepare. I have watered the plant though. I've been keeping up with watering really well on her actually because I knew that we were going to be doing the, the propagation, starting the propagation process sometime soon. So I wanted to make sure that she wasn't gonna be dehydrated on the day that I decided to do it. 
Other than that, we're just going in, you guys. We are just gonna do it. I'm gonna grab my shears, I'm gonna clean them. I'm gonna take probably a few cuttings. Um, eventually, I'm gonna have to take this all off of the plank, and I don't even know, like there's so many leaves. It's actually absurd because there's two vines. So here's a second vine, which for some reason has come unattached. I'm not really sure why, but that's fine since I'm gonna be like literally chopping all of these within the coming weeks. Um, for now, I'm just gonna start with the top ones, get those propagating, and I just have to figure out what I'm gonna do for the rest because like, look how many cuttings this is gonna be. I would like to propagate them all and then I can like, I don't know, give them away, sell them, whatever, pass them along to other people. Um, but I'm literally gonna have an army and I don't think I can accommodate that, so I don't know what I'm gonna do, honestly. I'm gonna have to figure that out. I think maybe I'll use like a bin, a humidity bin and a grow light and just like have a little cup with like a leaf or two rooting. Um, that'll probably be my plan. But yeah, for today, just starting off with a few cuttings to keep it simple, keep it easy. Now this is really exciting because these cuttings that I'm taking are gonna mark the beginning of a new version of this essentially. So once these root, I'm going to pot them up and put them on this plank and we're gonna start all over again, but we're gonna be starting from much larger leaves than what this plant was started from. So that's just gonna give us a, a one up, you know, and hopefully I will be able to get even more mature leaves on this plant. So I'm really excited just about this like whole process. I love this plant so much. I think that it's so underrated and I think a lot of people don't wanna deal with a shingler, but it's just been so much more satisfying to grow than I thought it would be. And it grows so fast. It's very low maintenance and it honestly does not take up much room. Like all you need is a very narrow space to like pop a plank. So yeah, I'm a big fan. So, um, okay. Oh my goodness. I want to make sure the camera gets a good view. Is that a good view? Actually, maybe, maybe. Oh, there's tape. I need to remove the tape. There's tape. Oh, I remember I put this on because it was trying to like go off the plank kind of like you see how close to the edge it is. It was really like trying to go off. So whenever that happens, I just redirect the vine and just tape it. So I guess I'm going to have to like gently, oh my goodness. Okay, I hope that the camera will be focused on this, but I'm just going to try to gently remove it. Oh boy. The roots really like cement themselves on here. I don't want to snap the vine, but I mean, I guess I have like a hundred cuttings of this, so. Oh, they're coming. They are coming. Some of them are breaking off, but some of them are like, oh, there we go. There we go. I'm going to do maybe one more down maybe i'll cut oh, i don't know how many do i want to take maybe i'll just cut it here actually because then i'm gonna have four leaves and this one is still coming out like the very top one but this plant is constantly growing, like it's impossible to get it at a point where it's not putting out a new leaf. Okay, I'm gonna get the shears here and I'm just gonna cut... Um, oh boy. Okay, I think we need to remove one more set of roots here because these ones are attached to this leaf. Okay, I think I'm gonna have to cut and then do that one if I want it because it's just getting too much. It's getting to be too much. Um, okay, I'm gonna do it here. Ready? Ooh. <gasps> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay, it's okay. It's okay. <gasps> oh wow. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I have a cutting of this. 
I can't believe that the day has finally come for me to chop this plant. How cool is that? How cool is that? This is what the back looks like. And you see what I mean? It's still like obviously expanding and like hardening off this new leaf and it already has the growth point um, putting out another, the start of another new leaf there. So it's just like constant growth with this plant. Okay, just gonna set that down and then keep working on this one. Oh, you can see the roots that got stuck on there. Okay, so yeah, I think I just want this one last leaf here. Ooh. Okay. And hard to get in between these leaves. Okay, I'm gonna do a choppity, maybe right here. Come on. Oh my goodness, it's a thick stem, you guys. I actually really like the way that the stem looks on these. Like, it's so flat, but she's tough. She is thick. So there is that beautiful leaf. Oh my goodness. I love this plant so much. Okay, so we have four leaves now. Oh my goodness, this board looks crazy now. I'll have to, like, I don't know, scrape those off or something. I think I'm actually gonna move this piece of tape that I removed earlier down to just secure on this second vine that's kind of growing wild. It's covering up all my little labeling too, but that's okay. I'm just going to, where can I sneak this in? If you have any suggestions on how I can propagate and grow a bunch of cuttings with limited space, I mean, I guess I could give them away as unrooted cuttings. I could just take like fresh cut, but ugh, it's just so much like organization and yeah, I don't know. Is there even that many people who would want this? <laughs> like even if I give it away for free? Well, either way, if you have any ideas for me, let me know. I think maybe if I do a big bin with a grow light over top of it and then I can just have little you know what I mean? I feel like that's going to be the most space efficient way. I don't even know where I'll put that though, like in my bathroom or something. I don't know. Okay, I'm just going to do a little impromptu sitting at the table here and cutting these into individual leaf cuttings. So again, here is this one. I wish I would have left a little bit more stem on the bottom of this. Maybe I'll have to be aware of that while I'm cutting these ones just because it's easier to situate them in a pot when there's a little bit more stem on the bottom. So I'm gonna cut this just a little bit closer to where the leaf is here. So that's not great. There's not a ton of stem to work with, but I think that sets this one up to have a bit more stem. This one's really easy to cut actually, the way that it's like just situated. Cut right there. See this one has a little bit more length on the bottom. That's kind of what I want to be able to pot them up. And then of course, just this little delicate top cut. It doesn't really have any roots yet, but I can feel where the roots are gonna come from. There's like little bumps. So that's what that one is looking like. I don't know how well this one will do, honestly, because it's still growing, but I guess we'll find out. Whew, I feel like I need a glass of water or something. I'm getting excited over here. Does anybody else have the problem where you go to grab your glass of water that's sitting on the counter and there's a dead fungus gnat floating in it? Because that happens to me a lot lately. <laughs> still waiting for my mosquito dunks. I think they're supposed to be delivered tomorrow. I just posted that I'm gonna be chopping her for this video on my story. If you're not following me on Instagram, make sure you go follow me. Okay, so I have decided to propagate them in sphagnum moss, which I don't do very often, but I don't know, something is just telling me <laughs> to do sphagnum moss. So, you know, I'm just going to answer that call and pot them up in, oh my goodness, I'm gonna dump my water, in sphagnum moss. 
Um, so I'm just going to be using these little clear cups. These don't have holes, so they'll hold in humidity and moisture really well. I get a lot of questions about where I get these. These were actually given to me by a friend, but I think if you search on Amazon for dessert cups, these will pop up or something very similar. I'm pretty sure that's what they are, so... Um, yeah, you can check that out if you're interested. My moss is already moist because I just boiled this all. I did a whole organize with me of my plant supplies for my Patreon video um, a week or so ago. So I had so much sphagnum moss. It was actually hilarious how much of it I just had like sitting around in different bags and pots and stuff. So now I have a full bin of just like freshly boiled nice and ready sphagnum moss, which is great. I could even add some perlite into this, but I think I'm just gonna keep it simple. Let's see if that's gonna be enough. Yes, it is. I feel like shingling plants are kind of awkward to put into little pots like this. Like, it's just a weird angle so this is just soaked with plain water right now but the next time i water them i'm going to be using super thrive water just to help promote that root growth i don't think that that i'll have any trouble propagating these i've had quite a few in my like prop box just really tiny baby ones i've never propagated ones with larger leaves like this but i've grown a lot of little tiny babies and they grow super fast, so I don't predict I'll have any problems. I mean, hopefully it's not gonna be as stubborn as the other Monsteras that I'm propagating right now, which are my Peru and Standaliana, um, which are very, very difficult to root, for me at least. Okay, so that's the first one. That's what it looks like. Perfect, like how cute. Oh my goodness. Okay, love it. The nice thing is that these are already acclimated to room humidity since that plant just lives in my bedroom. I'll probably try to tuck them somewhere near my Soltec Solutions light so that they're getting a lot of light and they'll be happy with that. So cute how it's just like this little vessel and then this big beautiful leaf love it moving along Is that not the cutest thing you've ever seen? I just have them all sitting on a little tray, I guess just to move them all easily. Um, and they're in front of this grow light here. I tried to find space to squeeze them on the shelf, but that just wasn't happening. So I think that this is gonna work just fine. So excited to watch these grow. Can't wait to keep you guys updated. Okay, off you go, off you go. Okay, Ooh. oh my goodness, it's back breaking work. Okay, so as you can see, next we are gonna be working with Ms. Monstera Albo. And I am going to be starting 
air layering on this plant. She looks kind of funky because the bottom leaves are all facing me, but then once the plant got taller, they started facing the window rather than the grow light. So the top like four leaves are kind of facing back backwards. So, you know, we can appreciate her from all angles. Ugh, I love this leaf. Ridiculous. Okay, so I'm gonna explain a little bit what my plan is here. So Trifolia, who is the brand that makes these self-watering moss poles that a lot of my plants are on, some of my absolute favorite moss poles, they are incredible. Um, they sent me a propagation kit, which consists of a base, which is going to be attached to the new, what's gonna become like the new plant. So this is an extension right here. This is three different poles. Um, so a new base is gonna be going onto this extension and then a new extension will be added onto the mother plant. I'm pretty sure is the gist. It took me a minute to wrap my brain around how this is gonna work, but I'm pretty sure that's what's gonna happen. So the first step that I'm going to take in this process is what we're gonna be doing today. And that is starting the air layering. So this right here is going to be the node that I want to root because this is going to become the base of our new plant. And I really should have started this sooner because now again, basically the same thing is happening. I waited a little bit too long, just like with the Monstera Dubia, and now this is going to be like growing off of this pole. But honestly, it's fine because once we're air layering, we're going to have like a whole root system happening and everything. So I think it's going to be fine. So I'm going to grab my moss again and I'm probably going to be using a Ziploc bag so I'm just going to gather everything up and then we shall begin. Okay so since this is pressed up against the moss pole so tightly already I think I'm just going to be wrapping my air layering right around the whole thing and then hopefully when I remove this I'm, I'll just do it as carefully as possible when the moss is wet and try to maintain as many roots intact as I can. Um, but I am going to chop off a lot of the length of these aerial roots because they're not going to fit into our air layering baggie. Um, so I guess that's going to be my first step with my shears again. I'm just going to do a little chop. Oh my goodness, she is thick. And then there's also, it's kind of hard to figure out which ones are coming from which, I mean, I think that this one is definitely, because there's another, there's two aerial roots coming out from this area, so I'm just going to chop both of them. I think that this one is from the lower one. Let me investigate that, though. Um, yeah, that one is coming from below, so I think that one can stay. I'm going to peel some of this crispiness out because I can't help myself, as we all know. Speaking of crispiness, for some reason, a bunch of leaves on this plant just out of nowhere started getting crispy on the edges and it's not even the white parts. Like I know that elbows get crispy and turn brown on the white parts, but this one has it on honestly like multiple leaves um, just on the green parts. Like it's very strange. Do you see that on this one up here too? Just like out of nowhere. I don't know if that was maybe from my underwatering also, or if it was, I don't think it would be from over fertilization because I haven't really been fertilizing a lot recently. But yeah, just something that's been going on with this plant. Okay, so next I am going to take this Ziploc bag. Is this gonna fit? What's the best way? I wonder, let me ponder this for a second. Okay, I think I'm actually gonna cut the bottom of this and then try to slide it over all of the leaves. Um, I think I can make it work, so. I'm just gonna do that. There's some water in here because I just washed this the other day too. but it's working. Uh, who's next? This one. Oh, this is the leaf that I really like with the white patch. Just be gentle. Um, okay, 
am panicking at this part because I need to get it around. Oh man. Ugh. Really bend in this leaf. Get it through here first and then I'll go around the moss pole. It's really stressful. I'm sweating. I'm sweating. Oh my god. Get out. Yeah. Okay. Whew. We're good. We're good. Okay, we have a big aerial here. Um and a leaf. Hmm. Okay, it's complicated now because there's not a lot of room. <laughs> I didn't think this through very far, did I? Um... No. No. You know, I think... I think I'm just gonna have to cut it. I thought that that was gonna work so perfectly. I could have pushed it, but I don't wanna break a leaf off of this. I won't be happy with myself if I do that. Okay. So, I just wanna make sure this is all gonna fit nicely. Oh my gosh, you can't even see me. Okay, just trying to figure out how I'm gonna situate this. So, just gonna use some of my Velcro to tighten the bottom because we want it to hold most of the moisture in. It doesn't have to be like completely sealed, but I want it to be like somewhat tight. So I'm just going to put that there, then I guess I'm just going to fill up this part with my moss. The top can kind of stay open, or maybe I'll be able to tighten it, we'll see. This bag doesn't give as much space as I kind of thought there was going to be, but I think it'll be fine. I'm going to make sure that it's going to cover the whole area where the node and the aerials are. I've air layered a couple times only, so I don't have a ton of experience with it, but both of, I've maybe done it two or three times and every time I've done it, it's worked well. So I hope that this is gonna go well. And then I'm gonna have two monster elbows, which is kind of crazy. I might even chop the top of this one. This is gonna be the new plant. I might chop the top of it too, because it's, I don't know, it just doesn't have as much white in the stem up there. And um, the leaves aren't coming out super variegated. I mean, I'll give it some more time and we'll see, but I might end up chopping it back down to where the last like variegated part of the stem or like really variegated part of the stem is. This plant is getting almost too tall for me anyways, so definitely ready to experiment with propagating it um, because it's difficult for me to like carry, to water it, and yeah, it's just getting, it's just getting large. Okay, let me take a look around. So there's moss pretty much all around, which is great. And same thing with this, I'm just, this is just the same moss that's just damp with tap water, but I am going to be using Super Thrive to water it in the future. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit more moss, and then it should be pretty good. A little bit more there. Okay, I'm going to go grab, oh, I hope that stays. I'm going to go grab my tape, because I just want to put a couple pieces. So... 
just going to put a piece here where we cut the bag on the side. I think I can actually sneak a couple pieces of tape onto here and that'll really help. Another piece of tape, I'm just trying to close up this gap a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect, it doesn't have to be pretty. I don't really care what it looks like, so as long as it's like maintaining most of the moisture in there. And then I'm gonna see if I can just seal this. Nice. All right, so I'm just gonna let this sit for a few weeks. I'm gonna keep my eye on it. Hopefully I will begin to see root growth. Whenever it's drying out, I'm just gonna use my little squeeze bottle, which I can get into any of these crevices really easily and just add more water. So that's super easy. But yeah, this is gonna be the beginning of this little propagation journey. Okay, so next we are getting into our repotting and I'm really excited about this because I'm going to be using this incredible pot that my friend painted and sent to me. Absolutely stunning, like look at that, the bats, the moon, the whole vibe of this, I'm literally dying. I love this so much. She is absolutely incredible and honestly good at like a million things, I swear. She has a planty YouTube channel as well called Planty Jen, so I'll link her down below. So go check out her channel. Love her so much. Thank you, Jen. So I have been humming and hawing about what plant I'm going to put into here. I asked on Instagram. A lot of people were saying my variegated Thanksgiving cactus or some of my new Hoya that I recently hauled in my plant trade haul. And I have decided. I looked at the roots of all the ones I have rooting and... Um, the ones in the cabinet aren't, I'm not quite comfortable with the amount of roots that they have yet, but my super silver croniana uh, already had quite a few roots. There's like a weird leaf that I need to grab floating in there. It looks kind of gross, but this plant has a decent root system already, so I think I'm going to pop it into this pot, and I just think that it is going to be an incredible combo, so that's what I'm going to do right now. People were commenting that these are prone to root rot and the person that I traded with told me that as well. So I am going to be keeping a close eye on this plant. But there's definitely like a lot of new roots forming, like especially up near the top here. They look really healthy, so hopefully it does okay. Yeah, I think a lot of these old roots are just like not... They don't look like they're really rotting, but they're just not in the best shape. So hopefully it does okay in here. Um, I have my potting mix beside me. I'm gonna start with some of that. I'm gonna make sure that the front is gonna be how I want it to be because this pot is just so cute. It needs to be admired. I'm just going to place them however I think. Oh my goodness, I love this Hoya so much. I'm obsessed. Okay, then this one. I'm going to put like that. Let me double check. Yes. Oh my goodness, I love it so much. Okay, let's fill her up. Um... I want to kind of do the front first, I think, in here. My jaw literally dropped when I opened this package that she sent me with this pot. 
I was not expecting that and I'm literally obsessed with it. I've had this in the water pretty close to um, a grow light and it seems to be happy with that so I'm probably just going to put it back in the same spot. It's just a random grow bulb. I don't even remember. I think it might be a Sansi bulb actually that's in that like tree lamp in my bedroom um, which does burn my plants if they're too close to it. So I keep an eye on the plants that are right on that shelf, but I think it'll be fine. Okay, so that is how it looks. Oh my goodness, how incredible. I cannot wait to watch this grow. I love this plant and pot combo. So freaking cute. Okay, and then the second thing that I wanted to pot up are my Epipremnum No ID cuttings. This plant was really trying to croak on me a while ago, so I cut it up. Um, some are wet sticks and some have a leaf, and I potted them, or not, not potted them, I put them into this sphagnum to root so that I could, you know, salvage some of them. And I think that they have rooted long enough, um, so I'm just gonna pull them all out and see which ones are ready to be potted up. These ones have some black tips. I'm just gonna take those off. That's because I let this sphagnum moss get way too dry once. The rest of the roots look good, just the very tips. Eh, this one can stay in until it grows a leaf. Oh wow, oh my goodness. Okay, this one is very rooted. Not too bad looking either. So there's just a couple that don't have leaves yet. I'm just going to keep them rooting into the sphagnum moss. But these ones are all ready to be potted up. I haven't even picked a pot yet. I need to go track one down. Okay, I think I'm just going to go for an orchid pot. I think that this is going to be a pretty good size for these. Now, I really hope that they grow out again because this plant was incredible when it was like healthy and thriving. I can't believe it just started rotting out of nowhere. That was very disappointing when that happened, but I have a feeling that it will just, you know, situate itself and then start growing again for me. I hope at least. I kept some long internodes on these. I've heard people say that if you keep more of the internode, it stores energy and helps the plant like root and grow. I don't know if that's true or not, but can't hurt, I suppose. Just a little bit annoying sometimes. Okay, this looks a little bit crazy right now, but you know, have to appreciate the journey and then hopefully we'll have a beautiful full plant one day. <laughs> Actually, once this starts growing, I would like to eventually try it on a moss pole to try to get some fenestrations like the other Epipremnum No ID that I have. Um, so, We'll see, but right now I'm most concerned about just getting some healthy roots and leaves on this plant. I am probably gonna try to sneak this into one of my cabinets, probably my, well, yeah, probably my Millsbow wide. I think that there's some space in there right now, just to give it a boost. 
All right, so that is what we're working with so far. I will keep y'all updated. Hopefully it does well, we shall see. Just glad to get those potted up because honestly, this just kept drying out way too much. I should probably put this in my cabinets too. Or maybe I'll cover it again. Actually, yeah, I'm gonna cover it again. Although I just put all those Monstera Dubias on the lid, <laughs> but I think I'm gonna take that lid back and cover this because the reason that I took the lid off of this is because it, the leaves were starting to touch the lid and then that can cause the leaves to rot and like melt off and everything. So that's why I took it off. But I think that I'm gonna spray this, put the lid back on, water this, pop this in the cabinet and then we're done. All right, you guys, that is it for today's plant chores video. I hope that you enjoyed. I can't wait to give you updates on all of these little projects. Don't forget to click the link down in the description box for a seven day free trial of Endel where you can experience personalized and relaxing soundscapes. We love that. Don't forget to leave me a comment. I would love to hear from you. Also give this video a huge thumbs up if you liked it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.